morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, whichever part of this great planet you're from. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. If you're new, thank you for giving it a try. If you like the content, I would highly, highly appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. And speaking of subscription, I hit 2000. Yay! Thank you guys. Thank you so much for giving me the privilege to have that many subscribers in such a short period. I am very, very humbled about this and I will be bringing you more and more and more shows as a year, the new year comes around. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping me reach 2000. Never expected that, but I'm very, very, very grateful. Speaking of grateful, my orchids have been giving a lot, a lot of blooms. Now, I know I haven't been posting in the past two weeks uh, after the Apopka show. I've gotten really busy with the business. So every time I get home is nighttime or it's been raining a lot. So today's the first day that it's kind of cloudy, but it's not raining. So I can bring you some of the beautiful stuff that's in the greenhouse. And if we have time, I will show you what I have in the yard that I have done new things around the trees with alocasias. I'm, I'm kind of experimenting with different plants and exotics. So I am really excited to share that with you. So anyways, for you guys that don't know me, I am Nelson and this is Nature Nell. Let's go look at some blooms. All right, guys, let's start here in the back. I know I don't have much to bloom. I just want to show you how much I've done here. I reorganized everything, my wall, I started putting my cat layers in shallow pots that I got at RF. I'll show you that later. And I kind of brought some of my trees or, and plants up. Now, I want to start with this Oncidium Tatsiku Marguerite. I got this in, at, I was going to say a popka, but yeah, it's, that's correct. The popka at the, oh my God. <laughs> Can you guys tell it's early? <laughs> at Carl Smith they had a vendor there I can't remember the name of the vendor I'll put it underneath I do have their business card but I thought these were so adorable they look like baby's breath and last time I showed you guys they had not been open yet and you know as I've said before any small orchid my phone has a very hard time focusing sometimes I have to put my hand in the back but it's adorable and I decided to transfer it to this beautiful handmade orchid pot created by Josh uh, Joshua Jones of the Orchid Den. If you guys don't know who he is, you need to follow him on Instagram and take a look at all the things he has for orchids. He is so, so artistic and he pays attention to detail and it's just, his stuff is really good. I'm so addicted to all his stuff now. <laughs> and this weekend, there was a, a show at Ophi's of uh, Orchid Supply, and he was there. And actually, um, he came over the night before, told me what he had. So on Sunday, I went and bought a bunch of these. These, this was the first one I bought from him. They're called the lily pads. And I buy the hangers or the hooks from, um, from Ophi's and I get different sizes. I got this one yesterday, it's more of a purple, and I love the detail on the bottom. Let me see, well, I'm, I don't know, it's too dark in here, yeah. Yeah, and you know, my phone just doesn't, doesn't really cooperate when it comes to focusing. So you see the detail, it's little stamps of orchids, and it's actually one of his orchids that he photographed, and that's what he uses as a stamping trademark. But do you see how pretty that is? And then when you hang them all together in different levels, it just looks really pretty. That The thimble's also his, it's clay on clay. The, the drip is actual clay. He has great stuff. And this is Natasha's from Just One More Orchid. And she also does some really cute and adorable, um, innovative orchid mounts. and. This was one of them that I fell in love with. It has the little bees. But I don't get to see her as much down here in Miami. So next time I see her, I want to get a couple of more things like her fears, spheres, her hanging spheres. All right, let's start with the blooms. This one here has been blooming for quite a while. I got this at RF. It's a Vanda Fianchai cross with Rick and Stylus. And it has a wonderful fragrance. 
very, very nice fragrance. When I bought this, I bought a bunch of compact Vandas from them at their booth. And they all had beautiful fragrance. So I kind of went a little crazy and bought them all. <laughs> this was at one of Ophi's um, shows a couple of months ago. Now, the sun is starting to come out. I spoke too soon. It was foggy and it was perfect lighting. With the sun, we'll lose a little bit of detail on some of these. I'm going to try my best to give you the best detail I can. <laughs> All right, this is also from Carl Smith. I have bought, it already has another spike ready to bloom back there. Yeah, we're gonna have trouble with the focusing. I am really, really sorry. Um, and this one is a Mimi Palmer cross with a Tessalata. And if you guys don't know about Tessalata Vandas, they are very fragrant. So anything you cross with a Tessalata is gonna be very very fragrant and this one has beautiful cakeys coming out so she's going to give me in the future a lot a lot of blooms but the fragrance of this is like buttercream it is delicious now the one right above it is from banyong this is a banyong fan um Escacenda banyong fantasy and the red on this see i knew this was going to happen with the sun today i was like let me hurry in case the sun decides to come out <laughs> Oh, that's pretty. Okay, I can show you it like this. This is a very intense red. I bought this because um, Banyans used to have another red that was even more intense. And I have never forgiven myself for not getting it because after the bad hurricane we had, they lost the mother, they lost everything. So I don't think they, they'll ever have that red again. But I do have this one that is almost as intense. And boy, does it bloom. It gives me so many blooms. It doesn't have fragrance, but it's just beautiful to look at. And all these are my ladies in waiting. As you can see, they have spikes, I have several in spikes. Now this one, if you guys remember my trip to RF Orchids and they had a festival, a show, this one I bought in, in a spike, but I fell in love with the actual flower because it had the center reminded me of let me see if i can get it in focus yeah stop moving stop moving there we go see it looks like this little bug die being <laughs> like a little being inside but anyways the color of this is gorgeous it's this white pure white vanda with incredible incredible tone on the edges it's like a very it's a like the silver lining in a cloud but it's kind of like violet and then it has that little touch of violet in the center. It is absolutely gorgeous. And there's a Vanda Muang Thong Mr. Sawat. And it has like two crosses. I think it's, it's Nakor Sawan Bell and Askasenda Tub Tin Velvet. <laughs> I probably massacred that, but that's as good as I can do for now. It's, it's, she's fairly new. So my the naming for this one is gonna take a while. And this one is the Vanda Bangsai Star Blue. I've showed you guys this before. This was one of the compacts that I bought from Carl Smith that I went a little cray cray. And I said, oh, it's a candy store. I'll take this and I'll take this and I'll take this. You get an orchid, you get an orchid, you get an orchid. <laughs> it was one of those crazy days and I left literally in less than 10 minutes, I picked like six compact orchids because it's just, they were too, too beautiful. And it was early in the morning. I said, you know what? These are going to be gone by the end of the day. And it was the best thing I ever did because they are all blooming. Look, this is another one I took that day. This is a Papilionanda. I think they're called Papilionanda. Yeah, Papilionanda uh, Park Sorry. I called it Parkinson's last time, but it's Parkson Re, I think. Parkson Re fragrance. And this one is a Mimi Palmer hybrid. So the smell is very close to that buttercream that i tell you guys that's so signature of the mimi palmer but look at that pink look at that pink lip isn't that gorgeous and it just sticks out there like like a showpiece <laughs> and speaking of showpiece i couldn't wait to show you guys this she is finally opened if you saw my video of Carl Smith uh, weekend at Springwater. I picked this Cattleya up. It's the only one he had. 
It's a beautiful, beautiful Cattleya. It's a sea breeze cross with a Louise McNeil, Hawaii, I think. Yeah, Hawaii, I think that's correct. But I'll put the name underneath. But look what a beautiful Cattleya this turned out to be. I mean, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful tone. That white fading into a, li a lilac, almost turning blue. And at night, I'm going to put an inset. At night, it looks even more violet. I don't know why, but the color does change. And I'm going to show you guys. It's just... I'm showing you these slowly because several of you have asked me. I know that you do stop and show, but we don't mind if it's a little bit longer. We want to see the flower more. <laughs> so leave in the comments if you guys think I should hang out by the flower a little bit more and you don't mind the videos being a little bit longer. I mean, they're already like between 20 and 30 minutes. So I, um, I don't want to bore you guys on just the same flower for a while there. So you tell me. I always adjust my my ch my videos and my channeling to your request if I feel it's it's something that makes sense and it's feasible for my channel then I'll definitely do it. I have no issues with the request. <laughs> now this I got at Pam's uh, Orchids in Bloom also in Apopka when I went to Carl Smith. She's about five minutes from there and she had a festival as well. She had several vendors but this is from her own nursery and I fell in love with this. It's such a beautiful, beautiful orchid. And it has three, three shoots filled. Now it's not fragrant. It's the only negative I would say. <laughs> it's not fragrant, which by the way, this one is very fragrant. I said it wasn't at first, but once it fully opened, it smells like roses, like rose petals. It's really, really pretty. But anyways, this one, back to this one, she is not fragrant, but man, look at how beautiful she is. Now, we didn't know the name of that orchid, and I still can't remember, so I am backing up, <laughs> going to my notes, as you can see. Notes! And she is a Goranthi, a Guarianthi Skinneri. Now, I know it's Skinneri because Todd so kindly put the way it would be pronounced and then the last i kept on saying skinnery and he put eye like in eyeballs <laughs> and that was perfect i was like oh skinner eye <laughs> so thanks todd for that and thank you lazaro for figuring out what it was because i didn't know what it was now this has been in bloom for months i kid you not this is my makara um sunspot and it's been in bloom for quite a while and I didn't know that they lasted that long. I would say about two months now. So thank you so much, Mokara Sunspot. I highly appreciate you. <laughs> and then down here, I have this beauty that just opened. I think I bought her at uh, one of those like unknown nurseries that are just like on the side. And I thought it was very interesting. And the lady said, oh, it's a fragrant Cattleya. And I said, well, what's the name? She goes, it says it on the tag. So. You guys want to see how funny this is? Mini Catlea fragrance. Sorry, it's not very fo not very well focused, but it really doesn't have a name. <laughs> I was laughing when I saw. It. I said, "Oh, she was being literal." <laughs> so, anyways, whoever, if anybody knows what this is, please put it in the comments because I love this little Catlea. Has such an intense fragrance. I mean, when I mean intense, I mean intense. <laughs> you can smell it from here. So if anybody knows what this is, please let me know because I love it and I want to get more. And I actually repotted her yesterday. I know a lot of people wait for the blooms to um, to fall to repot, but I kind of I'm so gentle with them when I pull them out of the pots that I don't even think they realize they're being repotted. I've done it several times and the bloom still lasts. It doesn't die. But you have to be very gentle. You can't really disturb the roots too much. And you got to make sure that wherever you pot it is a little bit larger not as large not too too large but for everything to be tight in there and i don't know she looks like she's happy and this pot as you can see it's bigger than the one i showed you hanging it's also from josh um from the orchid den and i just fell in love with the color and as you can see i have this new little setup here 
I wanted to share this with you guys. I got these at RF and they are amazing, amazing for, um, for Cattleyas. So I decided to start repotting all my Cattleyas. And this is what it looked like. It's a very inexpensive and easy system to do. You buy water pressured board. All this board is can, can handle water and some cinder blocks, or as I used to call it, cylinder blocks. <laughs> so I got some cinder blocks and some uh, panels, wood panels at Home Depot. And you, it's very easy to create. You just put it together like, like Lego blocks. <laughs> or is it Lego blocks or Lincoln, Lincoln blocks? I don't know. There used to be this thing I used to play with that were like blocks and sticks and used to build things. Lincoln Log, I think that's what it's called, Lincoln Log. But anyway, I want to share this because I'm very proud of it. And I put all my bond, my some of my bonsais uh, from Kiko Bonsai. Those are some of the ones I've gotten from him, from Smiley, from Ray's Bonsai. And this one's almost ready to open. This is a Heaven's Gate Cristel. This is Crawl Smith Jewel. <laughs> it was a uh, Frank Smith. Um, award-winning Cattleya and it's just when this opens you guys are gonna see it is w probably one of the most beautiful Cattleyas I've ever set eye eyes on I see why it's so incredible now up here in this long stem my Violet Violetta's uh, Bangyang Violetta are now in bloom but my god this thing is so long and I can't cut it because it has no roots the roots are way down there. It has a, a cakey coming out, so I'm hoping that'll kind of fill in. But if it had roots, I would cut it and then make it a shorter Vanda, which I've done with, with some of mine in the back. All right, so let's move on. I'm going to show you guys a couple of more, and then I think we have 15 minutes in. Ooh, it's going to be a little bit long. I want to show you some of the yard. This one is the Kelly Leia. She's always blooming for me and she smells delicious. She's just starting to open. She reminds me a little bit of the Francis Fox. You know, for your, those of you who know, who don't know what the Francis Fox looks like, it is literally right next to it. <laughs> so my Francis Fox is actually starting to open. But you see that, you see how much they look alike from the tongue. They have those freckles and then those beautiful ombre tones that go from fuchsia to yellow to red. So this is a Kelly Leia and she just started opening. And then my Francis Fox is up here and Francis is starting to open as well. I still have some of, I showed you guys last month, my Grandiflorum, uh, Bubba Phylum Grandiflorum and it had a couple of blooms. It's still shooting spikes. This one just started opening last night or two nights ago. So it's still a little bit closed, but it's such a cool bubble phylum. I always say this is one of my top favorites because it's just very different from other bubble phylums. It's like cross legs. And right, well, this is my uh, oh, I can't remember Walker Walker Rihanna it's already on the last one and it's about to fall but if you guys want to see how beautiful this was go like two or three videos back the Carl Smith video it was just four beautiful flowers and then down here is my sherry baby hybrid which from here I can smell the vanilla the sherry baby smells like chocolate but this smells more like vanilla and really 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 sweet and I got this at the flea market, at the Redland flea market. And they always have beautiful orchids um, in the back and you get some wonderful surprises. It's just very pretty. And so my totem pole, my dendrobiums are starting to open. I had to do recleaning because with the heavy winds, I got some damage. I got some broken, dendrobiums, some broken shoots. It was very sad. We won't revisit that, but I'm just letting you guys know that that's why I haven't really been showing you guys my dendrobium totem. Now, 
Look at the yard. This is what I wanted to share. This is why I've been so busy. We've cleaned up, or I've cleaned up all the bottom of our crop trees. And I added these um, very easy. You can get them on OfferUp, you can get them Home Depot. These are basically, um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank this morning. I need to eat breakfast. <laughs> pavers what you put for driveways so i started cleaning up and putting them around the trees and you know they keep the the weed crushed you know and they're very hard i tried it with these two and look how much of the little fern has grown on the ground this is actually a i don't know if it's a fern i bought this in a pot and then i some fell in the ground and they fill everything up and it gives me that sense of the amazon so that's how i started with the whole inspiration of the Amazon. So I put all my Hoyas in this spot here. They do get the morning sun, but then quickly it hides. See, they only get that little bit and then it hides. So it's just enough lighting for them to, to get some sun vitamin. <laughs> These are the new ones I bought. They seem to be really happy there. But I'm, we're kind of trying to finish all the trees. I've done pretty much almost all of them in the, in the back area where I have my, my screen room. But I'm taking cuttings from all my plants. Like all these are cuttings that I have taken. And well, that not that, that's uh, the lava, alocasia lava, white lava. And I got this from Lee's orchids and orchids and things. And Lee, I know you watch my channel. Look at your plant, how many babies it's giving me. <laughs> how happy she's here. And for you guys that want to put your alocasias on the ground, I think it's the best idea to put them on your ground because then they get like this. They get absolutely beautiful. But I learned that with the winds, it's smart to put some type of stability on the base because it'll bend. They're, they're very uh, fragile. And I've lost from my variegated over there. As you can see, my variegated uh, elephant ear. The wind kind of damaged a couple of the leaves, just like this one here that Gabriela from Kokimos gave me. We had some really hard winds. So I've been putting on the bottom, and they're very discreet, some core rock. But now this one, doesn't really need it. What, what I had to do, you see the leaves, what happened? I didn't realize our sprinkler system was in the morning would come up and smash the leaves. So what we do now is we put, I don't have it here now because I'm videotaping, but I put two big, huge buckets and it diffuses the, the water around it. So I think that that fixed the problem. Here's where I have all my sun sensitive plants this is my my hoya carry i variegated it's it's not looking so good so she's in rehabilitation <laughs> i think i overwatered her and she, i don't know she looks like she's coming back but i'm not sure all right guys i'm gonna just close it off here in this area so you can see real quick because this is getting very long all right see more coral rocks holding I put my maxillaria's coconut smelling orchids here. Took them out from the inside. And most of my vandas now are here, the ones that are not blooming. And this is uh, the sweet spot. This is where, as soon as I put them in here, they, um, they start shooting spikes. This one I just cut. It was massively long. And so I cut it, there's the bottom and there's the top so imagine this thing went all the way up there <laughs> so i cut it i put cinnamon on the wherever you cut it you put cinnamon and that keeps it from getting any type of disease or or fungus or this one i also cut and i am so glad i did because this one was not attractive at all it had that one piece in the back had this long long leg because it had gotten a bad case of fungus right when I got her. And so look how long it was. So I cut it, has a lot of roots, and I put it right behind it to create a really nice, let me show you, real nice scale. 
Now I got a little yellowing because we've had so much rain and and we, our weather's been like freaky. It goes from hot to really cold to, <laughs> to hot. So I noticed that when that happens, I always lose some bottom leaves, but it'll, it'll, it'll come back up. All right, here's a full view of my green space. My arachnus, you guys wanna see something crazy? I think it's time to start cutting them. <laughs> <laughs> they're a little bit too long already so i think i'm going to cut them in half and then just put them on the bottom and i'm thinking actually about putting them on that tree right there i think it's a perfect spot all right let's turn this puppy around all right folks that is it that is the end of the road for today i hope you enjoyed this show and tell of my green space and a little walk through my yard to see the new improvements. I hope that some of my improvements give you guys some ideas uh, of your own to improve your yard or your green space. If you do, send me a comment below. I'd love to hear when you guys pick something up from my channel and you repeat it in your own space and it's a success. That's, that's wonderful. So again, thank you guys for bringing me up to 2,000 subscribers. I am super, super happy. I am not celebrating with champagne because it's too early. But <laughs> but I, I already did at, at, at work with my coworker, Kim. Thank you, Kim, for buying a bottle. <laughs> but anyway, I will see you guys in the, that, in the next episode. I need to go eat breakfast. <sighs> I'll see you in the next episode. I am now seeing you're watching Nature Nell. And remember to always keep it green. Oh man.